All right, all right. I'll take something over Reckless Rage or Reckless Charge. Hmm. There's a survival going around. With pack one, pick one Ancestral, though. I think we just want to... Oh, wow, look at this pack. I do think Shieldred is better than Hull Breacher, but it's adding another color. You take the Shieldred, you're not getting the underground sea banks, so someone else is grabbing the seam. You could just double down on blue and take this whole breacher, which I guess I'll do. I really want shielded though. Hey, fuck it. Fuck it, live a little, Caleb. Live a little for once in your life. Treat yourself. Clamp maybe, draw even more cards. Damn's reasonable. Overgrown Tomb could set me up to be like bug colors. And then I'd at least have like one underdrafted color in green. Give me a core of playables. I think I'm gonna draft this clamp. More cards. Bob, this is a Bob starting. Looks pretty Bobbish. We got shield rid to gain some life. We can feed it to the clamp if it gets a little too painful. How do you feel about Gix? Um, close to unplayable. Just a low pick. Certainly a powerful card. Just fighting with too many other good cards. I guess I'm taking this Triome, huh? Someone to the right of me is doing a really good job of cutting blue. Potentially multiple people to the right of me. With Life Death, we can um, cast Life and then use Skull Clamp on our lands. Synergy. Other option here is Odawara. There's green cards coming around, but they're like really not good green cards. <laughs> yeah, none of these are in my cube. Kind of, kind of for this reason. What if you want some shit? What if you want some trash? What about that, Caleb? Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Uh, I guess I'll take the Angler. Maybe move away from Bob. We'll see. Might have to move away from Bob for some other reason, too, huh? Then the Angler could just make sense. Detective's not a bad one to clamp. Hmm. Survival and Roots here. It's not much of a survival deck yet, but it could be one. Hmm. Hey, unexpected crunch. Thanks for the seven months there. Unexpected says, Hey, Caleb, are you excited for Outlaws of Thunder Junction? Junction? My fiance is super hyped for the tiny skeleton man in a cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, uh, my, my hype has not revved up yet. Or, uh, no, to put it another way. But the day is young. I really like Dark Ritual Shieldred. I'm just going to take Dark Ritual. We're kind of blue card starved. And like True Name would play pretty well here too. But I want to get that Shieldred down ASAP. Hail to the cube. Absolutely, West Ham. A little Bayou action here. Yeah, I dig those uh, coming to play on tap lands, huh? Those OG duels. So if I'm serious about survival, I should take Fintorn Elves here. I think I am. Kind of wish we'd moved into red black the way that uh, the card's been flowing. I guess we got a Faithless Looting and an FDK. We could ditch green. The duels point us towards uh, towards bug colors, though. The Bayou and the Zagoth Triome. 
I don't think I want to play. I mean, maybe we're just like Jund Splash Recall. Or just Jund even. Yeah, it's Ragavan versus Fintorn Elves here. Do I really want to take Ruwall over Gut? I mean, we just did a fucking red aggro deck. Well, this plays well with Clamp, at least. Think about Cobra, think about March wearing. Uro could actually be sick, huh? With Survival. Just tutor it up when it's good. I think the Ragavan pick was a mistake. I can't remember what I picked over it. Oh, the I picked it over Fiddorn Elves. Yeah, Fiddorn Elves would have been better. Probably like a lot here, I think. Clouded my eyes. And I'm not gonna like follow it up with a gut, right? But I don't want to do that. Like I just did red aggro. So like, why am I tempted by the Ragavan? Sometimes survival with red is sweet, right? With, like anger and there's some madness red cards. But we lost some of those in pack one already. And I was in the mood to do something different. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Woody Foothills, Bitter Blossom, and Leobold all make sense here. Cool thing with uh, Bitter Blossom is we do have that Skull Clamp. I think I'm going to Leobold, though, right? We're already Bug Colors. Woody Foothills is very tempting. Hey, Benchmine here. Now the Survival's looking kind of good. I don't think we're going to be an LED deck. It's cute with madness creatures. It's cute with, um, like, if you're hellbent and you just want to crack your clamp or whatever. Overall, I don't think I like it here, though. I'll, there's still an outside chance I splash red. I'll grab the ren, I guess. I dig Once Upon a Time. I also dig the Scrapwork Mutt. Mutt just plays very well with Vengevine. Hopefully not playing that one. Yeah, another green mana dork in here, and I think we'd have, like, a solid shell. Fuck me, though, am I right? Kind of a big issue. Because we're a little light on playables. Ugh. Peatland versus Supplier. I don't hate the Blista. Supplier plays well with the Angler and the Vengevine, and it is just, like, a cheap creature. Feed it to Clamp. Feeds to Clamp very well. I guess I'll grab it. Could be really good if we get Hagak, come. Huh? Yeah, stupid sexy Ragavan. Got me off my my groove. Inti plays pretty well in these kinds of shells. We can get the pack rat for Lord Sinner, Sin uh, Skitter Synergy. The Flooded Strand can get Zagoth Triumph. That might just be necessary here. Ketria is a Forest Island Mountain. If I was thinking about Red Splashes. Oh, I just want the Breeding Pool, don't I? I'm gonna take Heath here and try and wheel that um squee hum. Wouldn't that be groovy? And this picks between Dothy and Sentinel. I'll take the Dothy. Hey, I'm at another mana dork. In an ideal world, we would get... Yeah, I'm just going to draft the Hagak and try and wield this Master of Death. I don't think anybody else is going to take the Hagak from me, but I just want to make sure I get it. We'll get this Bob out of here. I've been kind of impressed with Souls of the Lost and these graveyard-based decks. I like Evolved Sleeper. I like Numazawas. I'm going to take the, the Souls of the Lost. Plays really well with Stitcher Supplier, hum. I do not. I think it's probably just that um, it's too random to draw both kill a germ. Uh, this honor is kind of cute, right? Getting back Leobold. Or this Krasis. Oh, there's a Strix there, too. Yeah, I like the honor a lot, but I'm going to take the Strix. We want to keep the creature count high for the Fauna Shamans and the Venge Vines and such. And the Tapping for Gox and what what. How are we doing on playables? Six... 28. We need like two more cards. Maybe just one more card. I wouldn't mind uh, cutting the Berserk. I think I can afford this Peatland. 
I think we're gonna get some good wheels here though. Like I think we're gonna get Squee and maybe Squee and Master Master of Death. We'll see. Oh, really, Killajam? I haven't paired Gak with Alter yet. How does your um, your play cycle look? Are you just like using Hagak and Alter to mill out the opponent? The my impression was the reason Hagak and Alter was busted in Modern was because you had Bridge. So it was actual engine. You could like go through your whole deck and then deck the opponent. That's not like, really a, not really a thing in the cube, right? Because we don't have um, we don't have bridge in here. Gag to mill yourself first, then mill them. Well, what's the purpose of milling yourself? Hey, we got the master bank. Gak milled yourself to more cards. Yeah, but you're tapping your creatures to replay the Gak. So it's like every so like you sack the Gak to mill yourself for eight, and the next turn you rebuy the Gak and sack it to mill yourself for eight. You understand why it's like not really like a loop like it is in modern. I'm trying to understand what I'm missing. Are you starting this loop with just like a shitload of creatures in play? Yeah, we don't have bridge from below. Make souls bigger. So you already have souls of the lost in play when you started like altering yourself. I'm down to try the altar here. I'm just like trying to explain why that's the part that makes it busted. I think if Fastagok just like already murders them. I could see it helping you find Hagok too, but we already have Fauna Shaman and Survival, so I don't know. I don't know how much I need it. Roots plus Gak plus Altair. You don't think Roots plus Gak was a, would our just win? Like it's anyway. Yeah, the cool thing about Bridge was it was not only a combo piece, but you would mill it. You would mill it with the Altair, so it was kind of free within the combo instead of needing to start with all, all of them. Hey, good morning, Fracas. What's cuttable here? Maybe Tenacious Underdog. Oh, Yogmoth, huh? Get that Yog out. And then I'm willing to listen to arguments for Alter if people have strong feelings about it. Could let Hagak beat a Krakus, I guess. Next little week to Krakus. You want it just because you haven't seen it yet? Sure. I think that's a valid reason to test it. Should I cut Shinobi then? Yeah, one more mana dork would have been nice. Or some Moxin. This is nine green, which isn't bad, but survival's very green heavy, hungry. And this is 11 black sources, which is nice with the Void Walker. We also have Dark Ritual to get to multiple, multiple black though. So it's possible that 10 black's enough. Thanks for asking, answering my questions, Killajim. Six bloom. I think I want one more blue source. Even on a splash, it's really hard for me to... Play six of a source. It feels like you just don't see it often enough. And then you have your best card stranded, right? Your recaller, Leobold or what have you. Don't love this opener, but you can keep it. You got the detective surveil for a blue source, then you can clamp the detective, or we could just have a blue source. I think we're still gonna run out clamp on one. One's excited to get their Wayfarer on. Yeah, we get the Venge Vine bin, and then next turn we can go Land War Elves, Detectives, and get a free Vine. If I hadn't drawn Venge Vine, I, wouldn't, I would have played the Detective this turn instead of the Recall. 
Uh, sure. This will stop me from getting the vine out on my next turn. But it's not the end of the world. A lot of lands going on over here. Our best draw, and this probably isn't too surprising, would be survival. And after that, just like a critical mine with Lana War Elves would be pretty strong. I guess we could play Lana War Elves and try and clamp it. I'd rather have the creatures lined up for the vine though, hum. In case they have another instant speed removal spell. Interesting. Sure. Uh oh. Well, at least we're not like losing a creature. The Zarkon. And the detective gives me better closer to Vengevine. I'm actually going to play this detective, even though I'm not triggering Vine here. Pretty confident that uh, I can scrap something or what what. Not a bad one to get monetized. A wallet to discard the Bitter Triumph would have been hot. This, vine, this Vengevine's been rotting in the graveyard too long. Uh, Blitz does count as casting him. It says cast on it. Is it a short stream tonight? Um, I don't think so. I think tomorrow. I could put that in the stream title. Yeah, we'll put in short streams on Monday and Wednesday, ending around eight, ending around, still starting uh, around three, but ending at eight. So five hour streams instead of my usual like seven plus, but still meaty enough to like, you know, be worth jamming. Pack Rat, Bidding Lingering Souls. Oh, I'm going to skip, skip this one. Jeepers. I have to play this underdog, but it fucking sucks. Because, like, it brings us further and further away from this Vengevine. Hey, Reese, things of 49 months. Oh, they didn't activate Pack Radio Team. Each turn, okay, so they can draw a card on my turn. It won't trigger the detective. I was surprised they didn't just make a pack rat, though.
Back to you, friend. Yeah, Weed Fairy's good. I think our flood mattered more than the all these extra activations, though. Like, if they'd been binning, the pack rats would still be fucking huge here. Just casting granular pass. I have three blockers. Getting Vengevine back. I have three blockers. Seems pretty clearly better, I think. I don't know Monk Roll. It's probably, there's probably all kinds of combinations of cards that win. People got to stop thinking about, like, okay, there's only one card I can draw that can win here. People can attack wrong, block wrong. You could draw a draw spell, have multiple things going. They could trigger the detective. Making survival look good again. Might just be dead here, though, huh? Those rats are looking pretty saucy. Well, they're only at eight, so they gotta do some block in here, huh? We might want the mud as a blocker, and it might be better to play it on our second main phase. We want to rebuy bench fine, so you don't want to just slam it. You want to think about your lines first. They have to block Hagak, because they'll be drawing for their turn, so they can't just eat eight, right? They have to block Hagak with something. The pack rats can become six sixes here. I guess I like clamping the mutt, because it makes the commando awkward. I think they just want to make another rat here, though. I think I'm like happy if they sack the commando on clamp. Considering serving with, like, everybody but Shielded. What is there to draw? You can look through the cards in the deck. I'm not going to sit here and <laughs> list all the cards out. There's a, there's a deck list command for that. Yeah, if it had served, I would have clicked on it, huh, JB Mail? They have Cathar, but if they activate Cathar, then they're not activating Pack Rat, stupid dumb. So it might be better for me if they activate Cathar. Oh, they are denying draw, sure. But they're also not making a rat. We're at 13, taking two in the air, so essentially 11. They can activate rats twice to make them six sixes. So it's this rat pass here, or mutt pass. So I need two rats, represent 12 damage, combined with the spirit tokens would be lethal, so we have to block all of them. Alter would win here, be kind of a cute win. Yeah. Hmm. The pack rats are five fives. Think they just got me. I'm going to double check the deck list, make sure there's not an instant for um, this to draw me into that's especially interesting. I don't think there is, though. Yeah, Bitter Triumph's already been played. Yeah, we could serve both, and if they blocked both, go Leobold, bring back Underdog, which would trigger the bench line to get that back. Then we'd have two blockers up. It's not good enough, though. 
because they'll have three attackers. Then one of the rats connecting is lethal. Because they can make two rats again. So it'll be a 5-5. Five five. Oh, the altar was so close. It was so close! Yeah, if we draw altar there, then we just like tap our two creatures to rebuy Hagak. And they only had like 14 cards in the library. Pretty good argument for keeping altar in the deck anyway. That flood in the mid game where we just had like all the lands in the world was pretty brutal. There were so many turns where we weren't able to rebuy Vengevine, despite being able to bin it on turn two or three or what have you. Was awkward. Our 17 creature deck. Thinking about Yogg. That's interesting, huh? It'd be another dry engine. We got some stuff that are not bad targets. I don't love Underdog. I could see cutting it. Maybe Leobold's not that great here. I think mean, Leobold's always great. I'll leave it in. That opener was almost sick. And there's no reason to... It's just on my turn or their turn. Hmm... Yeah, I almost boarded in here, Snow. A few long games. I'd love to be getting the Voidwalker down. Fucking oh well, huh? How concerned am I with exile effects? Feels a little cowardly to me. Oh yeah, deal. I'm like pretty happy they're playing pack rat instead of flashing mag souls. We'll see if I feel the same in a few turns. Oh, they did both one turn? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Dargan. Oh, show it up. Hey, Lion's Eye Diamond. Thanks for 45 months. Appreciate you. I wonder if I should mill myself here to try and find Hagak. They don't have lethal, right? Nine damage in the air. If they have a removal spell, they have the win. Because then they can kill the Vengevine and give the pack rat pro black. They only have one card in hand, though. So it'd have to be swords. Oh, swords would let me gain life, too. But then I would lose the vine. Yeah, Lion's Eye Diamond thinks the sub thinks have 45 months there. Diamond says, target creature gets minus forward, minus forward until end of turn. If you control a wizard, draw a card. And Brother Teresa, thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 62 months. Appreciate you as well. Thanks, folks. So they had 29 cards. 
If I sack the supplier, the souls becomes plus four. I could sack the supplier, mill self four. Venge mine, mill self four, eight. Or no, it would have to hit it off the supplier. Oh, show it up. Hey, engineer, thanks for 88 months there. If we'd found Hagak off of that mill, I think we'd have a win, right? We lead on sacking the souls, they'd mill for 14, going to 15 cards. Then we bring back 8. 8 plus 6 is 15 exactly. They would deck. But since we whiffed on that, I don't think we can get there anymore. Just thinking about if Vengevine would do it. If we sack Vengevine to Milm. The only non-permanents in the deck are Ancestral Recall, Dark Ritual, Bitter Triumph. And the Graveyard currently has Ancestral Recall, Bitter Triumph. Oh, but if we sack the Vengevine, then the Souls... If you if you make the Hagak, it shrinks it shrinks the souls, so it's no, it no longer works out. Yeah, we, we just have to pass here. Vengevine did already trigger this turn, yes. Engineer five ninety with eighty eight months sub saying one day a new emote will be upon us. I can feel it, engineer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, Hagak. Voidwalker looks really good against them with their reanimator sub theme. Thanks, Hellish. Yeah, complicated board, huh? The uh, Mother Runes making our aggro plan, our plan A, much, much worse there. I wonder if Berserk's interesting. It's really cute with the un uh, Unruly Crisis, huh? We really don't want to. Um, what's the word? We don't want too many non creatures in the deck, though. Too many spells. As we saw with the Souls of the Lost that last game. It is cool with Souls, too. That's a fair point. Like, we don't draw the altar. Could swap out the Dark Ritual for it. I think Dark Ritual Shieldred is too good, though. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, let's just do that. Our next is kind of slow without the Dark Ritual is all. also contributes to the altar wins. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah, a lot of the tanking on the previous turn was me trying to figure out if I could win that turn, right? Because it was very close. And it could matter. Could have mattered. Sure. Put him took a mole on the play. This deck looks fun. Yeah, it, it is. All my survival decks have been pretty fun to play. I've been enjoying that. Cycle this cube. Hey, that one's not bad. And then I think I just fetch out Bayou with this Heath. Maybe even Basic Forest. Hmm. 
You can kind of punish for not running out the clamp, um. Sort of. I mean, they did pitch cast grief. Like, now they're down to one card in hand. Hello, hello, hello. We do need a green or black creature for the Sagak. The Mutt does not work. I think the scrap work can uh, contribute towards the colorless on the Convoke, though. A dragon's not the worst clock. Moto, please. I mean, the opponent's just, uh, you know, thinking about their, thinking about their dragon as they do. Oh, perfect. Gonna lead on the Stitcher Supplier. It sees more cards, so there's a better chance of milling Vengevine. We did not mill the Vengevine. I guess I'll leave Alter on top. I don't know how much I like that. Yeah, keeping Alter might have been super wrong here. Yeah, I don't think we sack. Maybe we do. Sack the Hagak and rebuy it. It nets us like plus three cards in the graveyard. Oh, it does not net us plus three cards. It nets us like one card. But we do get to rebuy that Master of Death next turn. That's kind of cute. Oh no, it's still it's still it's it's still like net plus four cards. Cause we pay three, so we're exiling four and milling eight. Only four delve, cause cause we use the scap work munt towards it, right? So we can pay life, get back this master of death. Which means I'll have between it and Hagak, I'll have for sure two creatures for Vine. Haywire might, but not answering Altar. Think about sacking the supplier and see if I can hit Vine. Why don't I just mill them twice? Eight plus eight is sixteen. Twenty-four. They have twenty-eight cards. Fuck come. Hey, pilot Evan thinks the sub thinks the ninety months. So what happens if I sack 10 to mill myself 10? Rebuy Hagak, rebuy Vengevine. Yeah, it doesn't work because I'm not hitting them twice with Gok. And now I think they're going to hate where my answer my alt aim. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to deal all 28 points of card damage, huh? 8 plus 8 is 16... Plus five is 21, plus four is 26. Still have two cards left. That's still too many. It, yeah, it just doesn't work, huh? The altar win. Swinging all out doesn't do anything. We got mother runes and these are shitters. It's just a Hagak, it would just be an Hagak att attack.
And yeah, if they didn't have the priest in play, then milling them and rebuying Hagak to set up for a potential win. That way on a future turn would be sweet. But they do have the priest. Maybe we could have gotten them to less life. Yeah, just getting their block sack in, maybe. Well, that block's no longer very good. Put them at four life. Attack all would have forced a block. Uh, I mean, the I don't really want them like eating stuff with copter and stuff. This next turn, I like attack all a lot. Hmm. Too bad we didn't find a Vengevine earlier, huh? Uh, David Seville, I only have eight cards in my library. And the cards to get back Hagak back once. You can't get Hagak back for free. You have to... Cast card. You have to use mana, right? You have to, like, tap two creatures to rebuy it. And then you have to exile the cards to delve. So you need to make sure that you're actually killing your opponent. If you're trying to Hagak them out. We couldn't kill them out other than previous turns. If you mill them into, like, two cards or whatever, and they untap a priest and reanimate their attracts or what have you... It's pretty not great. Interesting attack. Oh, they're looking for something for Priest. They're trying to YOLO into an attract, so there. I like it. That might have been their, their one chance to win. The color of the card doesn't matter for Delve. The color of the... The the, the, the fucking... You can't cast use mana to cast a spell. Yeah. So you can't, like, exile a black card to pay for the black on a gog. That's why... That, that's, like, the one restriction of the card. Is that you need to have two black or green creatures in play. To cast a Hagak. Which is why when this deck was played in Modern, it, was, it wasn't it was just Altar of Dementia plus Hagak. It was Altar of Dementia, Hagak, and then they would also play Bridge from Below. So then when they would sack Hagak, they would make zombie tokens, and then those could get you back the Hagak, and it was very easy to do it multiple times in a turn while actually generating board value. This hand would be great with a green source, huh? This hand also needs more green mana, but at least it's functional. Yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to bin here. I could bin the Master Death or the Ruwala and just like plan on having the survival get the other one. Souls of the Lost binning Ruwala is kind of cute. Yeah, maybe the Souls is the bin. It's going to be kind of small in the early game. Let's get bridge in the cube. Let's not. <laughs> that seems a little. What's the word? Parasitic. Well, you're you're using too many cards, too many narrow cards. Now the madness. Next, like also need to combine a sack outlet. Activating survival here is great. So I mean Leobold also seems great. Just hard to answer him. What I'd like to do is bin Master of Death, go find a Vengevine, set up a nice root wall of Vengevine turn. Chains of Mephistopheles in the cube. There might as well be. There's so much shit. There's so much anti draw stuff. You almost like can't even play your own draw sevens. Unless you've got like Answers to your opponent's Narsets and Hull Breachers and... Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Sure, you both have Leavold. Alright, well now I mind.
The Sunken Ruins is really awkward. Because if I activate it, then I'm not activating survival with that mana. Let's play that fucking three and a four four. I was thinking about setting up a um, Pagak this turn. But I think this applies the best pressure. You love Engine? Me too, friend. Me too. And Legacy, you used to be able to just get four of them. Just fucking. Four Wallas, four Vengevine. Hell yeah, I am Mio. I remember GP Columbus. There were like a couple of other survival players. They were playing like the regular value survival with Squee and stuff. And some of them decided they liked Vengevine, but they were only going to play like two Vengevines and like Abe asking Ruwala. <laughs> they hadn't gotten to the point in their testing where they realized that if you discard Vengevine or Basking Ruwala first in the chain, that's like an extra 4 3 hasty trampler, which is really good. <laughs> and you never need Squee in your deck because you always just go get more Vengevines. Whatever you're doing with Squee is worse than just killing them. So the Leobold's going to prevent my draw, right? Interesting that they didn't kill my Leobold. Vengevine's a card that's pretty easy for me to get back again. Survival is banned in Legacy, yeah. Magic players do love to dirtily, um, yeah. Yeah, that's a big part of it. I don't think I can play Hagak here. I'm just going to grab Voidwalker. Well, I can tap, tap the Supplier. So I'd have to regrow re re the Vengevine. I'd have to tap the Supplier, the Lanor Elves, and the Ruwala. I want the I want to grow the Ruwala with the Krasis this turn, I think. So I think this is a little bit better. Yeah, Dagon Chrome. Uh, I'd actually spent... So I was at a point in my time when I was jobless. And I was putting, like, everything I had into magic. Giving it a go, you know? And uh, if I had busted on GP Columbus, I probably would have had to, you know, find something else. Go homeless. Go back home, live with my folks. Something. Something. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, it, was, it was not a... I was not a... Um, what's the word? Not doing super well finding work and stuff in Chicago. So I um so I was putting like a lot of time into Columbus cuz it felt like it was going to be my like my last real shot at uh making um a go of it with magic and stuff. And then if I'm sitting there staying inside every day, I'm not eating much, I'm not spending much money, that sort of deal. So I spent several weeks testing this Vengevine survival shells. And uh I expected survival to be like really big cuz uh uh, LSV had talked about it on uh, on Channel Fireball. Like people, people knew that it was a combination of cards, 
and that was interesting. And I figured as soon as somebody, anybody tried that, they would realize that's fucking great. So I was actually expecting to play a bunch of survival mirrors. So I had a gauntlet of like green white survival, blue green survival, green black survival, using like LEDs and cabal therapies and stuff. And the uh, the blue green one was the one that like felt the best in the mirror. And I thought having access to force of will was going to be good against random opponents that I wasn't like including them in my gauntleting too. So that was the version that I brought to uh, GP Columbus. And then I showed up, and there were like two other <laughs> people playing Venge Finds and Survivals together in the whole in the whole tournament, and um, and I, th I think I was the only like straight blue green player. I mean, nobody else had fucking found Aqua Amoeba of all of all goddamn cards <laughs> to like have enough blue cards for Force of Will and enough green card and enough blue cards, or and, and enough creatures for Survival and enough uh, discard outlets for Venge Vine. because you're occasionally you would have to win without having Survival, and so it was nice to have the the discard outlets. Anyway, that's a whole hell of a lot. 14 years ago. But I remember, still remember this tournament pretty well because it like kind of kicked off my career. And then I wrote a bunch of articles about it and stuff. And I've talked about it a lot over the years. So it's still pretty fresh. Um, and then something that was kind of validating for me is like a year later. Not a full year later. It was, it was some months later um, after the meta had developed. And there were like a bunch of all these different... Uh, survival variants in the wild um, that people were playing in various tournaments and stuff. I think Chapin actually like took all the data and pl put them head to head to see which one was the best in the mirror. And he found that the blue green version was actually the best <laughs> in the mirror. So like it turned out that my testing was, was accurate that I was just doing by myself. You know, I was just jamming decks into each other home on at home on a, a magic workstation, essentially proxy decks. Yeah, it didn't take very long for Survival to get banned in Doomwake. And at that point, I'd been testing uh, Blue Red Painter, porting Blue Red Painter over from Vintage. Because um, I thought it was actually going to match up well against Survival. Just like half a turn faster, and then also um, pretty consistent and stuff. And then it, uh, it ended up Survival got banned, and I was like, okay, well, maybe this painter's, <laughs> Painter deck's still good anyway. And I never cracked a top eight with it, um, but I had a slew of top sixteens, and then the the per first person to to win an SCG event with with blue red paint accredited me, which was pretty pretty nice, pretty nice of them. But because I never actually like won an event with it, people never associated me with, it with me like they did with with a uh, survival. Which, to be fair, I, I also didn't win GP Columbus, but top eighting is enough. Top eighting, top eighting is enough to like put it on the map, you know. Lost to Saito in that top eight with uh with blue black uh, Merfolk. He had a sideboard that was a bunch of like submerges and uh, and parishes and stuff for the zoo matchup, and that matched up pretty well against like my noble high arc survival deck. But yeah, kind of funny that he managed to beat me twice in the same tournament. So I'm going to. Lead on Stitcher's Supplier here, and then if the Supplier mills Vengevine, then the, the White Voidwalker will be able to trigger it. We did not. Oh, well. You know me from Nick Fit? Yeah, Nick Fit was not uh, not my deck, but a lot of people do associate with me, it with me. I helped put Nick Fit on the map, and then I also um, did a lot of content for it for a while. So I don't mind people associating me with it, but it wasn't my original... Uh, Archetype creation. That was a DAO from um, from Magic League, or um, or he was also he was also on the source. <coughs> but the version that I top aided that uh, SCG Invitational with was my build of it, the the green black thing. Certainly some Caleb style card inclusions in that one. Tin Fins was also not mine, no. <laughs> but that's another one that I put on the map. I think that was another one that had been doing well on um, on Magic League. I was like, this deck's fucking sweet.
Man Spirits and Modern. Yeah, I haven't seen Man Spirits and Modern in a while. I also had a blast with that deck. That one was mine. I uh, a buddy of mine um had posted uh, an Esper list of spirits on Facebook that I thought was interesting, and it kind of got my wheels turning. And I streamed the development of Bant Spirits. Uh, it actually wasn't me sitting down and going like, all right, time to invent Bant Spirits. It was me sitting down, and, and uh, I had like four or five different ideas, different potential builds for Spirits. Straight blue-white, uh, my buddy's Esper list uh, with Lingering Souls. And then uh, one, of the, one of the lists within that was Bant, where I was, where I was splashing for Noble Hierarch and Collected Company, um, both because Collected Company, obviously great in a tribal deck, helping you piece all your pieces together. And then Noble Hierarch was a really important piece of that as well, fixing the curve. Because otherwise, you only had Wandering. You know, you only had the one spirit, one drop, which is which is not enough. And then as uh, more spirits kept on getting printed, more spirit lords and stuff, Warmont got obsoleted pretty fast. Like, yeah, germs. I am also very glad I made it as a, as a streamer. Yeah, there were a few years where I was um, just playing tournaments like every single weekend. I'm writing articles and stuff, and they were very scrappy years. A lot of good times in there, a lot of sweet tournaments and stuff, and like pretty formative for me as a player, but my god. I'm just going to pass here. Sure. Thinking about Master of Death. Shieldred's kind of cute. Let's do this. So I was thinking about Voidwalker, and then Voidwalker could play a Minskin Boo. Well, that's probably bad, huh? It's probably worse than just playing the Strix and having a good blocker. The Hull Breacher does stop the Strix drawing. What if I got Hagak and then played Stitcher Supplier? I'd have four cards in the graveyard. What if I got Hagak? Yeah, it just doesn't quite work, huh? Well, the Minsk is dying, mutant. You can stop. Where you can stop like pissing your pants about the the Minsk and boom. Maybe Souls of the Lost is good here. Just get another blocker. Oh, I tapped myself out of the Souls. I needed to double black here. That was part of the line. Uh, this is still fine. We'll just run out all term. Instead of um, instead of playing a sweet blocker and like a four five here. Fuck huh? I even thought through the the tapping too, and then still fucked it up. Too much loose change. Jambling around in the old p noggin here. Ugh. 
what am I eating tonight? I'm eating a few things. I got these bed of um, peppers and greens. That fucking rocks. And then there's pork with a creamy sauce with uh, crunchy jalapenos on top. Yeah, hopefully the extra 40 damage I took doesn't end me this game. Oh, I just drew the gawk anyway. I want to play this gourmet gangler this turn. Nah. No, this is fine. <clears throat> hmm. Are steps open? Uh, uh. I'm not sure. Ask me. Actually, this is a good time to ask me. Sure. What do you think in Brunswick Scoom? 16 plus 8 is 24. Yeah, not quite. Yeah, second, the supplier pumps the souls, which is kind of cool. Represents a lot of milling. Some cool direct Dex King, but no trophies. Mono two and ones on the day. I mean, this is draft number three, so we're in the finals here. I like this spot <clears throat> where, like, the altar is scary, and just, like, my regular board is also scary. This would lose to their Ancestral Recall. <laughs> That'd be a funny way to lose, though. Oh, the whole bridge just stops me from losing to Ancestral? I'm sure. Okay. So looking at their graveyard, they do have Soul Guide Lantern, which is not ideal for me. And then natural order crater hoof, so they could potentially clock in very quickly. Deathrite Shaman. So like Deathrite Shaman, I've actually tested Deathrite Shaman against like old versions of survival with Benjamin. And Shaman didn't feel like that big of a deal because they would exile a Benjamin and you're like, okay, I still have two Benjamins, attack you, kill you. It it wasn't hard to like overwhelm it. Um here though, we only have a single Benjamin. So a card like Deathrite Shaman might be an issue. Might be harder to play around. You want to play more rounds with it? This deck? I mean, this deck's been pretty easy for me to draft. This is like the third time I've had green-black survival stuff. Maybe more if you count like the Jun variants. It's just usually, usually open because it takes like putting together a lot of working parts. Maybe people are used to survival being bad. I'm counting the root stacks in with this, Mana Wargs. Right now, I'm mostly thinking about if I want Berserk in or not. We didn't see a draw seven with their Hull Breach area. Doesn't mean they don't have one, but we didn't see one.
I should get a turn one fetch out of Triome. And then a uh, turn two Void Walker. I don't really see Life Death as a sideboard card. It's probably a card that's going to be in your main deck if there's room for it, right? If that's what you're doing. I'm going to play around Tidebinder by cracking my fetch on my turn. Not worth doing in the dark, but we did see that they have a Tidebinder, and we haven't seen Wasteland, so play around the one you've seen, right? That would have been a main deck thing, though, Coop, if I was interested in that. Can only play so many non creature spells in these decks. I think this is about the most number of reanimation cards they've ever been in the cube. But they've printed a lot of value cards, like the land cyclers and the, the pitch elementals and stuff. So a lot of people are grabbing Animate Deads and um, and Reanimates and Necromancies, even when they're not dedicated Reanimator. No Hull Breacher Plocks. I guess Tidebinder would also deny me the card. A Reanimator Stip. Somebody, somebody just asked about a Stip. I don't want to um, promise it. Did I get a response? Brunswick Stew said a draft based on your new name. Brunswick Stew. I have been tied by dude. Cutlass asks, I just jumped back into your stream for the first time in a long time. How's life, wife, world outside magic? Um, I haven't been married for like three or four years, Cutlass Fury, so it must indeed be a long time. Life's good. Me and my girlfriend are happy and healthy. I've been doing physical therapy. My wrist has been getting better. I feel like I'm getting on top of everything. Yeah, life's good. Hope you're doing well too, Cutlass Fury. Been a minute. I wonder if I put it, have it be like Minsk and Boo verse. Cradle's pretty sweet if they have the hoof in their hand, though. So maybe it's like Minsk and Boo Hull Breach Reverse. Hell yeah, Coop. Love to hear that. No, nothing's going to shovel back in because of the Void Walker, right? This trigger only triggers when it's put into a graveyard. Did I ever get surgery for my wrist? No, no, no. I had a physical, physical therapy prescribed. And I've been doing stretches for years and stuff. And now I've got physical therapy scheduled for my back as well. From the gaming, gaming's a pretty small piece of that puzzle, pieces. I started getting wrist problems back when I was in um, high school. It's like drumming a lot. And then they got real bad when I was in college because I was an English and writing major. So there were weeks where I was draft, where I was writing, where I was typing like 15 pages a day. And then I was still in like garage bands and I was still trying to drum and stuff. And we were practicing multiple days a week and then playing shows on the weekend and stuff. So my wrist had a real rough time of it. And there was a long time where like I had to do... I'd wear wrist braces for basically everything. And right now I only wear them at the computer and I can I can even get away with uh 
not wearing them at the computer for a few hours. So yeah, it's been good. Hmm. I could second to souls. Be a little bit better against bounce. Then shovel into the deck though. I probably don't want that. Also, three five fives match up worse against a seven seven for our opponent here. So I think keeping it as a 15-15 is better. The altar? Oh yeah, the altar would be funny here. Mm -hmm. A little bit worried about a random hoof kill here before I can win with World Spine Worm. Almost ran out of the Souls of the Lost. They have seven cards in hand. It's a lot of cards. Oh, shoot it up. Hey, Mulchy, things like eight months. Hell yeah. Been in Waker, sure. I shouldn't be F6 in the opponent's turn, because I might want to crack the Peatland on the end of turn. Anyway, dead on Waker of Waves. Oh, right, because we cracked our Voidwalker. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah, that might be a nice bridge turn, huh? At the start of the turn, they didn't have enough stuff in play for Hoof to be a lethal threat. But the Waker waves down, it totally is, hum. Oh shit. Well, maybe that wins. The Tidebinder's exiled. Alter has been putting in work. Glad I reconsidered it, hum. Yeah, it works well. The amount of people that are like churning through their own libraries makes like random altar kills really good. And then occasionally you want to use it to try and find like Vengevine Hergok. And then sometimes you're just like growing souls mid combat. And then every once in a while you actually can't win through combat, so giving you an alternate avenue of victory is really strong. <laughs> In response, I shall gain two life. Sweet. First trophy of the evening. All right, we had two questions. Would Bizarre have been good in that deck? Uh, yeah.